بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين سورة الإخلاص is a Meccan surah which was revealed after Surah Al-Nas and before Surah Al-Najm uh, the name of the surah uh, that was uh, very famous amongst this, the, the companions radiyallahu anhum is قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ this is the name that was famous amongst this as a matter of fact Imam Bukhari entitled one of the chapters in his Sahih in his book with that about the name of the uh, surah uh, and what is uh, common amongst the scholars of tafsir is that the name of the surah is al-ikhlas uh, ikhlas is to purify right uh, and this surah the theme of the surah is purifying your your faith the oneness of allah tawheed right believing in that this, this is a pillar of one's faith uh, and uh, shunning associating with allah azza wa jal which was the main obstacle against the da'wah of the prophet uh, sallallahu alaihi wasallam the reason for revelation as uh, reported by a Tirmidhi classified as sound by Al Albani, is that uh, the polytheists, the idol worshippers of Quraysh, uh, as Ubay ibn Ka'b uh, narrates, said to the Prophet, وسلم, What is the lineage of your Lord? Because they didn't know what he was calling them to. So they wanted to identify the Lord that he's calling them to worship. They said, what is his lineage? So Allah Azza wa Jal revealed, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Say, O Muhammad, Allah Ahad. Allah is one. Uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri and this is reported by al-Bukhari uh, said that a man heard another man uh, reciting during Qiyam Qul huwa Allahu Ahad during the last third of the night the entire night he was reciting Qul huwa Allahu Ahad uh, so when when uh, in the morning, the man went to the Prophet ﷺ and the narration said the man felt that this was little. I mean, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدُ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمِي رِدُّ وَنَمِي رِدُّ وَنَمِي رِدُّ لَهُ كُفُونَ I had four verses to repeat that and only that for the entire night. He felt that it's not enough. He needed to recite other verses of the Qur'an with it, other chapters of the Qur'an with it. So he went to the Prophet ﷺ and informed him. The Prophet ﷺ said, وَالَّذِي نَفْسِي بِيَدِهِ I swear by the one in whose hand my soul is, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ is equivalent to one-third of the Qur'an in reward. Now that doesn't mean that reciting it is like reciting the one-third of the Qur'an. For example, if we say that it is like re actual recitation of one-third, well the first third of the Qur'an has Al-Fatiha. So if one recites Qul huwa Allahu Ahad in the, in the first rak'ah alone, would that suffice him from having to recite Al-Fatiha? Of course not. But it's just the reward. Ahad uh, holds a lot of meanings. This, this name of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, it means Allah Azza wa Jal is one and only. He's single, he's unique, he's indivisible. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is none like to him like him subhanahu wa ta'ala there is none like allah azza wa jal allah samad now this name is is beautiful a samad is is someone to whom people hasten and rush seeking refuge protection help aid and support everything and everyone is in need of a samad and a samad is not in need of anyone or anything. Allah. 
Allah, this is beautiful to know that we worship a Lord with this description. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He neither begets nor is he born. Uh, if he begets or he was born, then this directly contradicts and, and clashes with Ahad and Samad, with which Allah began the surah. Because if you're born, you'll die. And you'll be inherited and Allah Azawajal doesn't die. Allah is the all living. If you get children, this means you have to have a wife. All of which is something that Allah Azawajal is very far high above and exalted above subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in this Allah Azawajal, as Ibn Abbas said, Allah Azawajal did not uh, did not give birth to anything like Maryam did and he wasn't born like Isa was responding to the Christians who said Allah has a son whose name is Isa and the Jews who said that Uzair is the son of Allah وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدْ nor is there to him any equivalent subhanahu uh, and again, these, these verses, one after the other, emphasize and re-emphasize the theme of the oneness of Allah Azza wa Jal, the unique aspect of Allah Azza wa Jal and His essence, subhanahu wa ta'ala, the need of people to Him and Him being self-sufficient, not in need of anything, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Laysa kamithlihi shay. There is none like unto him subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and this is reported by al-Bukhari, said, uh, as Abu Sa'id al-Khudri reported uh, or narrated, he said, uh, why wouldn't one of you recite one third of the Qur'an during Qiyam in, in one night? So the companions felt, and this is another incident, proving the same thing, that it's equivalent to uh, one third of the Quran. The companions felt that that's too much. How can we recite, uh, you know, one third, one third is ten juzu. You know, ten juzu takes a lot of time. It means a lot of standing up during that night. You know, ten, ten, that's 200 pages, bro. That's a lot. <laughs> Subhanallah. So the companions felt that this is too much. Then he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when they when he saw that and one of them said, Who can who can bear standing and reciting one third of the Quran? He said, reciting Qul Hu Allahu Ahad is equivalent to one third of the Quran. In reward, again, we emphasize on this. Uh, some of the virtues of this uh, surah. It uh, makes one entitled to be admitted into Jannah. Uh, and Nasai reported, and this is classified as authentic by Al Albani. Uh, Abu Huraira said, uh, I was with the Prophet وسلم, and uh, I heard a man uh, reciting Qul Hu Allahu Ahad to the end of the surah. Uh, at that, the Prophet وسلم, said, Wajabat. It's mandatory for him. Abu Huraira said, I turned to the Prophet and said, what is mandatory? He said, Jannah is mandatory for this man. Allah obliged himself to give him Jannah for reciting Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. Another story uh, with the same uh, reward uh, which is reported by uh, at Tirmidhi and classified as authentic by Al Albani. Anas ibn Malik radiallahu anhu said that there is a man who's leading people during salah in the masjid of uh, Quba, and whenever he would recite, he would begin after the Fatiha with Qulhu Allahu Ahad, and then after that, 
uh, he would recite something else. And would do that in every single rak'ah. So Al-Fatiha, then قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ And say, for example, Al-Kafirun. Second rak'ah. Al-Fatiha, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ Al-Masad. And so on. So the people in the masjid, the congregation, spoke to him about this. He said, listen, this is how I like to lead the prayer. You like the way I do it? I will continue to lead you in the prayer. If you don't, then I will step aside and you just bring another person. But they considered him to be the best in recitation amongst them. And they disliked that he is replaced with someone else. So they kept him. And then... Uh, he, sallallahu alayhi wa uh, used to go to Quba. So when he visited Quba the, 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 the following time, they told him about the situation. So he called him. He said, oh, so and so, what prevents you from adhering to what your friends are asking you to do? Yani, stop doing this and do something else. Uh, and why do you have to do this in every single rak'ah? He said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I love this surah. When, when you think, when you go into the depth of, this, of the meanings of this surah, you cannot control yourself but to love the surah. So the Prophet ﷺ said to him, your love of the surah entitled you to be admitted into Jannah. Allahu Akbar. Uh, it makes a person deserving of the love of Allah Azza wa in the books of Al-Bukhari and Muslim Aisha radiallahu anha said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sent uh, a man leading a, a troop on a battle uh, and he used to recite Qul huwa Allahu ahad again in salah repeatedly when they came back when they returned back to Medina, they informed the Prophet وسلم, about, about this. He said, ask him, go ask him why. Why does he do that? He said, because it is, meaning the surah, is the description of the all-merciful, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I love reciting it. So the Prophet وسلم, said, go back and tell him. His love entitled him and made him deserving of the love of Allah Azza wa Jal. The Prophet وسلم, said, and this is reported by Imam Ahmed and classified as authentic by Al-Albani, he said, whoever recites Qul Hu Allahu Ahad ten times, Allah Azza wa Jal will build a house for him in Jannah. Ten times. And reciting Qul Hu Allahu Ahad ten times doesn't take a whole lot and the more you recite the more houses you get in Jannah we ask Allah Azza wa to bless us uh, situations when this surah is recited in the second rak'ah of the sunnah of uh, Salatul Fajr as reported by Ahmed and classified as authentic by Al-Albani the second rak'ah of surah uh, Sunnah Al-Maghrib the sunnah of uh, Maghrib after the Maghrib as reported by Nasa'i and classified by, uh, by Albani as authentic. And the second rak'ah, in the two rak'ahs you perform after tawaf. You know, after you finish, finish the seven circles of tawaf, you go and pray two rak'ahs, which is called sunnah to tawaf, right? In, this, uh, in these two rak'ahs you pray and recite al-kafirun in the first and qul huwallahu Ahad in the second, and this is reported by Ibn Majah and reported as authentic by uh, Al Albani. In Surah in, in Salatul Witr, if it's a single rak'ah, then you recite it, Qul Hu Allahu Ahad after Fatiha. If it's a three rak'ah uh, salah, then you recite it into, uh, in the third uh, rak'ah of the salah, and this is reported by a Tirmidhi uh, classified as authentic by Al Albani. Uh, 
uh, it is part of your morning and evening adhkar as a protection. The Prophet ﷺ said, and this is again reported by a Tirmidhi classified as authentic by Al Albani. Uh, he said to Abdullah ibn uh, Khubayb, uh, recite Qul Hu Allahu Ahad and Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Falaq, Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbil Nas. In the morning and in the evening thrice, it will repel any evil, it will protect you from any evil from falling or befalling you. Uh, and it is also part of the adhkar before one goes to sleep. Uh, Uqba ibn Amr radiallahu anhu uh, said, I was with the Prophet sallallahu in one of the battles and I was leading the animal uh, over which the Prophet sallallahu was uh, sitting. Uh, and he said sallallahu alayhi wa to Uqba, I will teach you uh, some surahs the like of which was not revealed in the Torah in the Injil in the Zabur and in the Quran itself uh, he said every night you should recite قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقِ and قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْنَّاسِ no one will be able to seek protection by the means of anything like these three surahs. Aisha radiallahu anha uh, reports and this is uh, narrates and this is reported by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. She said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa whenever he went to sleep he would gather his hands like this and blow. Now some of the scholars said he would blow, be blow before thrice and some said he would blow after recitation, two ways. And then he would recite, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدْ قُلْ أَعُوذُ رَبِّ الْفَلَقِ قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ And wipe the front of his body as far as he could reach. She said, رضي الله عنها, when he became ill in his death sickness, he could not do that. صلى الله عليه وسلم so he commanded me to do it and wipe his uh, body, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, and these are some of the uh, virtues and some of the timings or situations where it is recommended to recite Surat Al-Ikhlas or Surat Qul Hu Allahu Ahad. With this we will conclude uh, and open the ground for uh, questions. إن شاء الله سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت أستغفرك وأتوب إليك